With this funding bill, we've increased the VA's budget to the largest ever. We are delivering the resources needed to fully implement crucial VA reforms that, as you know, we've gotten. You know the reforms. We're going to go over them in a minute, but they are some reforms. And to deliver for our great veterans, just the way I said I would, constantly on the campaign trail. You backed me, and I back you. That's the way it works, right? That's the way it's supposed to work in life. And with our booming economy, which is now, I think we can easily say, the greatest economy maybe we've ever had in our country. Stock markets yesterday, and I believe they're up today, so that means today. But the stock markets yesterday hit the highest they've ever been in the history of our country. And we've broken the record now over 100 times. So we keep breaking it, breaking it. And actually, we have a long way to go. There's tremendous potential. So with our booming economy, I'm also proud to report that the veterans' unemployment recently achieved its lowest level in more than 20 years. That means a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs are taking place. Last year, I also signed into law the landmark VA Accountability Act. You know all about that. And that was something that was very important to me because you couldn't do anything. You couldn't if somebody was bad. You get a lot of great people, but you have some bad ones. You couldn't do anything. Now you can do it. So I want to thank the dedicated veterans, affairs, doctors, nurses, and staff members who join us. Now we're finally rewarding the many great people at the VA while also ensuring that those who mistreat our veterans. We had people that really mistreated our veterans. They are now being held accountable. That's why it's called the VA Accountability Act. And they are being held seriously accountable. Right, Mr. Secretary? He's had a lot of fun. <laughs> He's had a lot of fun. We take care of our good ones, and the others are held accountable, right? And there was no way you could hold them accountable. They could be sadists. You had some of them, too. Doesn't sound nice. They could be thieves. They could rob you blind. They could steal money, and you couldn't do anything about it. Now you can do whatever you want. Now you do what's right. And you have a secretary that's doing what's right. He's tough and he's smart. <laughs> and I can tell you, this is always a good sign, General Mattis was not happy when I took him out of the Department of Defense. You know, we were going to have him for a short while, and then we said, you know, he's doing so good, we're going to keep him here. He wasn't happy. And that's usually a good sign, isn't it, Governor? When they're not happy. If they're happy, that's not a good sign. He wasn't happy. He's still not happy, but that's all right. But you're happy, right? In a few months, and a few months ago, I was very proud to sign into Law, another tremendous victory for our veterans. Maybe this is the one that we kept talking about and talking about. 48 years, they couldn't get it. They couldn't get it approved. Made so much sense. Uh, I used to talk about it because I thought I was this great guy that had this great vision. It's called VA Choice. And I said, you know, if you have lines where you can't see a doctor for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, 12 days, eight days, how about one day? No good. I said, I have an idea. Send them out to a private doctor. Got great doctors. And they'll be taken care of immediately. We'll pay the bill. I thought it was like this great idea. Well, they thought about it for 40 years. They couldn't get it passed. We got it passed. So we have now VA choice. So now, if a veteran can't get the care they need from the VA in a timely fashion, they have the right to go see a private doctor. Today, for the first time in American history, I am about to sign a bill that will fully and permanently give our great and cherished veterans choice. So you don't have to wait in line for 18 days to take care of a simple. I mean, we had people waiting in line with a simple problem that by the time they saw the doctor, they were terminally ill. No more of that. If you have a line, you go see a doctor. You get yourself taken care of. We take care of it. Okay? Good. It was uh, amazing.
It was amazing. You would, you would think that would have been uh, easy to pass? Well, there's a reason it took so many years. It wasn't easy. You have different groups and different people. But in the end, we all came together and we got it done. VA choice. Here with us today is Vin Putigno, a Vietnam veteran who's a great guy who lives in Las Vegas. And now through the CHOICE program, he can see the specialist doctors that he needs while still getting his primary care through the VA medical centers like this one. And that's the other thing. There's so many great things that they do that people don't recognize. And you don't have to go out all the time to get what you need, because so much of it is taking place here. We have some tremendously talented people. I always hear about the incredible level of treatment and talent that the doctors have. You have really incredible doctors and nurses. You had to get to them. That was the problem. The bill I'm signing today also provides the VA with vital funding for opioid treatment and prevention, a big problem in this country, a big problem here and in the country, for mental health care services, telemedicine, which is the new thing, and more than $1 billion for veterans' electronic health records. Uh, we've done a lot of work on health records, and now you're able to transfer easily from Department of Defense to the VA and back and forth before it was almost impossible. It was a big thing. Today's funding package also delivers for the men and women now serving in uniform. The legislation includes more than $10 billion to build, renovate, and repair houses, schools, training centers, and other facilities on military bases. They need it. There's been a lot of a lot of times gone by, and they're in bad shape, but they'll very shortly be in very good shape. This is terrific news for Nevada's nearly 20,000 active duty and reserve soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and National Guardsmen. We are providing nearly $100 million for three bases right here in Nevada. Creech Air Force Base, Nellis Air Force Base, and the National Guard Readiness Center just a few miles away. This bill also includes $15 billion for the Department of Energy's Nuclear Weapons Securities Program, which is so important, to modernize our nuclear arsenal and keep the deadliest weapons from falling into the wrong hands. Finally, we have secured $7 billion for the Army Corps of Engineers to build crumbling ports and waterways and to keep and improve flood and storm barriers so that America remains safe. On Wednesday, I visited North and South Carolina and met with first responders and survivors of Hurricane Florence, credible people. I was inspired by their unbelievable courage and resilience. Our nation mourns the tragic loss of life. And I don't know if you're aware, but by tomorrow afternoon, massive amounts of water will flood into South Carolina. They got hit, but the big hit comes days later. And it will be the biggest they've ever had. I said, well, is there a chance? I was there. I said, is there a chance that maybe it doesn't show up? They said, nope, it'll be here at about 2.30. And it's going to be uh, very, very bad. But uh, they're ready. They're ready. They're really ready. And the folks that in the military and FEMA and first responders, they've been incredible. But our nation mourns the tragic loss of life, and we're moved by the countless ways Americans have come together to rescue those in danger. You see it all the time. You turn on the news at night, and you'll see people being pulled from cars by first responders in the military, FEMA workers, and, and frankly, citizens that are there. Last night, car got just taken away by the water with people in it, and they were able to get them out at tremendous danger. Working with state and local leaders, we will not rest until that entire rebuilding, North and South Carolina predominantly, is complete. Really great leadership in both places. The governors, the senators, I met with everybody, and they're really ready. 
They're really ready. And North Carolina's largely been hit. They're almost at the stage where they're rebuilding in South Carolina. As I said, watch tomorrow. It's going to be a tough one. In everything we do and everywhere we go, we are committed to safety, prosperity, and opportunity for all Americans. And for every hero who wears the uniform, and that's really why I'm here today. I love those people who wear that uniform. I love our law enforcement, the job they do. Our firemen and women. These are incredible people. And I think, for the most part, our nation is beginning to realize it, maybe more than they ever have before. Credible people. With this legislation, we are securing a better future for our citizens. We're modernizing our nation's infrastructure. And we are building military bases worthy of our great heroes. We are ensuring that our brave veterans are respected and cherished like never before. And our country is respected again. Our country is respected like never before. It's a big difference. The country is respected again. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to thank you all for being here and just say God bless you, God bless those who serve, and God bless the United States of America.